Here we demonstrate a few built-in Excel functions. We're going to start with the mean. Now in Excel, the mean is actually called the average. So first I'm going to put the value of the mean right here. So I'll click on this cell. We type equals to indicate we're going to do some calculations. And then first give it the function name. So average, we put a parenthesis in, and then we have to tell it which numbers we want to average. So we'll click on the top value over here. This is our list of numbers down here. And then I'm going to hold down the mouse button, just drag down to the bottom to indicate the entire range. You can see the little flashing dotted lines around it. And over here it says A1 to A12. We put close parenthesis and hit enter. And there it is, the mean. Now for the median, we can do something similar. There's a built-in function called median. And if we can't remember the function or remember the syntax for the function, one way you can get information about it is using the function browser. So this little F sub X key, which is right here on my version of Excel, and it shows up in different places on different versions of Excel. But if I click on it, it'll bring up a big list of functions. I've already asked it for just the statistical functions. And I'm just going to scroll down this thing until I find the median. It's in here somewhere. There it is. And then click OK. And it brings up a window to fill in information about so that it can do the calculation. Now in our case, we're going to give it a range of values from the sheet. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing we did last time. Go from A1 down to A12. And there it's filled it into this thing. The second one can be blank. We don't need any other numbers. And we'll just say OK. And it does the calculation for us. Now Excel computes the median in exactly the same way as your textbook. Uh, this is a pretty standard way to do things. You take the middle value, and if there's two middle values because you have an even number of data points like we do here, then you take the mean of the two that are closest to the middle. So we could have certainly done this by hand uh, by just sorting this data set. In fact, we're going to do exactly that with the quartiles. And the reason is, is there isn't a standard definition for how to compute quartiles. It varies a little bit from one piece of software to another. And we want to stick with the definition given in the textbook, which is for the first quartile, take the lower half of the data and find its median. And for the third quartile, it's the upper half of the data and find the median. So to do that, the easiest way first is to sort this. We can actually do that automatically in Excel. So if we highlight this set of data, then I'm going to go under data and then sort. Now it's brought up a little warning because it sees these other numbers here and it thinks that if we're sorting this we might want to have to be sorting these along with it which is an appropriate thing to do in some cases. Here it's actually not. So I'm just going to say continue with what we've asked it to do and, and sort. And then it gives various choices. Now uh, do we want ascending or descending? So we'll go with ascending. That should be fine. Say OK. And now what's left is our same data set, but now from smallest to largest. And if we look in the middle here, 6 and 7, notice they're both 245, so their mean is 245, and that's the median. In the case of the first quartile, then, we look at the first six values, the bottom half. The middle two, in this case, are 235 and 236, so the mean of those two is just, well, what's right in the middle, uh, 235.5. So that's the first quartile. For the third quartile, we do the same thing. From 7 to 12, the middle two are 9 and 10. Uh, the mean of these two now is just 249, right in the middle of the two. So that would be the third quartile. We now have all the ingredients we need for the five number summary. I won't bother typing them in. Remember, it's just the minimum, 231, the max down here at 256. It includes the two quartiles and the median, and, and written in order from smallest to largest. OK, for the variance, well, there's a built-in function, just VAR. Again, put parentheses in. Highlight the range of values you want. Changing the order of our data values doesn't change things like the variance or the mean, so there's no harm in having done that. Close parentheses. And then standard deviation. Uh, again, well, why don't we do this one using the function browser, just for a little variety. We'll scroll down here. farther. Uh, we can see there's a bunch of things that look like standard deviation. For now, we want the one that doesn't have any extra letters after the STDEV. So we'll go with that. And right now it's got some range of values, but I don't think not the ones we want. So we're going to go up here and highlight these to be explicit about what we want. Oops, just down to 12 there, A1 to A12. Say OK. And there it is. You can check for yourself that if you take the square root of the variance, you actually do get the standard deviation.